In just a few weeks, you'll be able to go to your local nursery and buy hanging pots with beautiful flowers in them. Or you can do like we're about to do and plant your own. That and a whole lot more coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden. This program was funded by the following. At dollarseed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. Dollarseed.com. What could be healthier? The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener supports the following. Hunger Task Force believes that every person has the right to adequate food obtained with dignity. They're providing food for people in need. With their 151 acre working farm and fish hatchery in Franklin, Wisconsin, volunteers are needed daily. You could plant seeds in the greenhouse, ride the transplanter, or you can make an instant $10 donation from your mobile device by texting FOOD to 52000. For more information on how you can help in hunger, visit HungerTaskForce.org. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Holly Baird. This show is dedicated to the average gardener, simple home living, and using what you already have. There's many uses for hanging pots in your home, and flowers are very important to the vegetable gardener, believe it or not. There's many different reasons why, mainly because flowers attract good bugs, like bees, which will help pollinate your vegetables, and keep the bad bugs away. We also like to reuse our hanging pots because it obviously keeps them on a landfill. It's good for the earth and it saves you money in the long run. Now you might want to start your flowers from the fancy ones that they have at the Home and Garden Center, but it's really gratifying to start your own knowing that you planted them yourself, took care of them, and in the middle of the summer you'll have a beautiful bounty of flowers. So we're going to start, hanging pots come in different sizes. We're going to start with these, these two smaller ones here. Um, they have this thing in the bottom to help with the water drainage. You can just leave that in there. That's fine. And then we have, we're going to go ahead and fill it up with dirt. <clears throat> it's easier to fill up your hanging pot if you just pop one of these tabs off and move it to the side. So I'm going to put some soil in here. Obviously, you don't, don't want to fill it all the way to the top, just below the top of the rim. Alright, that's enough there. Then what you want to do is you want to kind of tap it in there. If you got a lot of clumps on top, you know, we want to break those up so it's easier to plant through that. You just use one of these trowel tools here and uh, pat it down and you're ready to plant. So what we're going to do is we're going to plant some daisies and some forget-me-nots, okay? Um, what you want to do is you want to read the back of your seed packet. It's going to tell you when to plant outdoors. We don't have to worry about that right now. Um, it's also going to tell you things like how long it takes to germinate, how deep to plant them, uh, how much you should space them apart, how high they're going to grow, and what type of, if they're going to come back year after year, or if they're just going to um, perish after they're done being after the year. So what we're going to do is this one says plant one eighth of an inch deep, space two to three inches, um, and it takes 15 to 21 days to germinate. So what I like to do is I like to take the back of my trowel, or if you have like a marker, you can, I mean, you can put your finger in there, but I just like to do this and kind of make a little spot for it to go. It says two to three inches, so you just kind of 
you can do like a pattern or do it random. I usually do like a circle and then I get my seeds. Daisies are my favorite flowers. That's, I think they're really pretty and simple. So then you get your seeds out, you put them in your hand and then you just drop them in there. And then a couple extra for good luck. And then you just cover them, cover them up, tuck them in there. Then what you want to do is you want to use like a spray bottle. We have this uh, kids watering can that came with this bucket I bought for the beach and um, you just water them. It won't blow out the seeds that way it's kind of nice and, and light and then you water them. And then you leave them to grow and then halfway through the summer you're going to have some nice flowers, some nice beautiful daisies. So those are the daisies. Put this back on there. Oh. There, that aside, and we're gonna plant the morning or sorry, the forget me nots. Okay, so this soil is pretty well packed down. Move this over here. Then we're gonna look at the back of our packet. Um, there it is. You want to sow them one eighth of an inch again. These ones you can space about one inch apart, so a little bit closer. And uh, these ones are nice annual pretty blue flowers. I'm going to use this to open up my seed packet. It's always good just to open a corner. I wouldn't do this on your regular table. This is our work table. Don't scratch up your kitchen table or something. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the back of my trowel. It's not exact signs, you just don't want to plant them too deep because, or too deep, I mean, because they could rot in the soil and you really don't want that. Okay, just put some in my hand. If you have like really, really tiny seeds, you can always use a tweezers, put them in your hand, and then take a little tweezers and pick them up with those. If you have a, extra tweezers laying around. I always plant a couple extra and they're just, it's not perfect science and some of these seed packets are just so, you know, if you buy them on sale or somebody gives them to you, you know, they're a dime a dozen, so it doesn't hurt anything. You just have more flowers in the end. So I'm going to cover them back up. And then I'm going to water them. So now we got them both watered and planted. So now we want to label them. Obviously you want to know what kind of flowers you're growing. If, Well, maybe you don't, but I like to label mine because I like to know what kind of flowers are going to come up and, and see how well they do. So there's several different methods of how you can label them. You can, some people, you know, if they use a packet, they'll um, cut out the lettering and stick it onto a toothpick or a planting stake. Um, you can use old window blinds. Um, if you could find window blinds that match the color of your planting pot, it could blend in, or you could just use these. I like to use these popsicle sticks. They're fun. Um, I'm kind of crafty. They're kind of crafty. Kind of my style. So I just take a Sharpie and, um, let's see, this was a forget-me-not, so I just write. Okay, so forget-me-nots, and then the date. And then I just put it to the side so it doesn't bother the seeds at all and put it in there deep enough. Put my uh, hanger back and that one's all ready, set to go. And then I have to get another label out. I'm going to use the window blind since Joey gave this to me to use. And these are the daisies. And again, daisies. And the date. And I usually write on both sides. Put that in there. 
And then you want to hang them obviously in an area that gets a decent amount of sunlight and then you can begin to watch your flowers grow and then when it gets you know closer to the spring you put them in your garden with your plants and help attract those bees and get them outside and get them conditioned to the weather and then you have beautiful flowers to look at and also have wonderful lovely vegetables to eat. A food dehydrator is a very useful item to have in the kitchen. There are two different types of food dehydrators on the market. There's this style, which has a fan that blows the air through the unit to help remove the moisture from the food. There's the other style that has a heat coil that allows the heat to rise through the unit to remove the moisture from the food. There are many things that you can put in your food dehydrator to, to remove the, the moisture from. One thing you can put in it is fruits and vegetables obviously. Most food dehydrators come with a chart to tell you how long to dehydrate them for and how to treat them. You can also do meat, um, you can make jerkies and things like that. There's different settings on the dial on the food dehydrator that will show you um, with your guide that comes with it on how to dehydrate them properly. We actually purchased this unit at a rummage sale. We purchased the base four units at one and then we found the extra four. You can stack up to 10 with this. Some food dehydrators you can stack up to 30. This unit came with the uh, fruit leather tray. That's this tray here that you can put the fruit on. Again, usually you can find those recipes in your instruction manual. And then we also have an herb drying tray. One thing that we use our food dehydrator for is making what's called pumpkin flour. Where we dehydrate the pumpkins, we grind up the flesh of the pumpkin, we grind it up, and then we make pumpkin flour. Um, aside from dehydrating food, you could also use it on a very, very low setting for some seeds or beans to dry, dry those. So there's many different uses for a food dehydrator in the kitchen. A frost blanket or frost cloth can extend your growing season whether early or late in the year. But they also can be expensive along with the metal rings that go with them. A simple alternative is bed sheets, preferably one you're not currently using. They can be any color as long as they're not flannel. Our example of protecting our karabi is a light blue bed sheet. Now with the commercial grade uh, metal rings, those are expensive, but a simple alternative that we have come up with here at the garden is dowel rods and vacuum hoses. The vacuum hose has enough structural integrity to hold the cloth up above the plant to protect it. And you don't actually have to have dowel rods that fit in the, the hose exactly. You can cut down two by fours or PVC pipe works well as also. So we've got three of these, we call them hoops, uh, dome hoops. And you just want to take your cloth and cover the plants that you're protecting up and you can use uh, rocks or pieces of wood or brick to secure the cloth to the ground because you don't want to have any holes to where heat can escape out from underneath the cloth. A simple, effective way to protect your plants with things you already have in your home. There's more than one way to make pesto. It's a delicious condiment that you can put on many things including pasta, chicken, some people have used it as a dip for their fresh vegetables. Today we're going to make our pesto with kale. Kale is a green leafy vegetable. It's very high in antioxidants, it's got a very good cancer preventative subs substance in it, helps remove toxins from your body, um, helps your cardiovascular system, so there's many different um, benefits to consuming kale. We have about eight cups of kale that we blanched. We, blanching is basically just put the kale in boiling water for three to four minutes um, just to kind of soften it up. So we're gonna put that in the food processor. Along with the kale, we're gonna add basil. You don't have to add basil to your kale pesto, but we grow basil here at the garden and we had it ready to go. So we just decided to go ahead and, and throw that in there also. One thing you want to add for sure is garlic. About two to three to four cloves, just depending on you know how garlic you, you like things. You could start with some and then move on to more. You also want to add some Parmesan cheese. 
you know, cheese that comes in the shaker too like that. You can use fresh stuff that's up to you. We just have that on hand, so that's what you use. So first we're gonna pulse this and then we're gonna add some olive oil. Then you add the olive oil. You wanna add about two to three tablespoons. That's really up to you. You can use, you know, regular. So, let's see here. Oh, and as you can see, we made rich green delicious pesto that we can use in many dishes and something that you can freeze for up to a year after you've made it. Fruit flies are extremely annoying and you can't really control them um, unless you work really hard. So I'm going to show you an easy way to get rid of the fruit flies in your home. Sometimes, you know, when you have a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables around and the temperature spikes or the humidity changes in the air, all of a sudden all your fruit ripens really fast and you get a lot of fruit flies. So here's uh, something that you can use with items that you're just gonna have in your kitchen anyway. And it's pretty simple to put together. Now, you can go online and you can find all sorts of crazy traps that you can make for getting the fruit flies. Um, I'm not gonna lie, we just want them out and gone. We're not trying to be humane here. We're at a pet store and I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of them as best as I can. So you have apple cider vinegar, dish soap, and a, a cup to put them in. I'm going to reuse this cup that I, um, this disposal cup I was using. Um, even after I'm done, I'm going to reuse it and start some seeds in it. And if I'm not going to do that, I'm probably going to recycle it. So you take your apple cider vinegar and you want to fill the cup about three quarters full. You can use a bowl doesn't really matter what you use, just make sure that the ingredients are going to stay inside. Then you got your dish soap, um, just regular, doesn't really matter what kind of dishwashing liquid, but it has to be for hand dishwashers, not automatic dishwashers. And you want to just put a couple drops, kind of, not a whole bunch, but just enough to get it in there, okay? Now here comes the really, really scientific part. It's a very special tool that you need to get this together. It's a spoon! <laughs> so you just mix it all together. I just give it a couple quick stirs. And then you just want to set this someplace. In your home I usually set one behind my kitchen sink. If I have a lot of fruit flies because they tend to kind of flock towards that area. Um, or if you have them like you know, maybe like the top of your fridge or something, someplace that's out of the way of children and pets and whatever else. So that's pretty much what it is. I don't really know why they like it. I guess they like the smell or the taste of the apple cider vinegar. The reason why they stay in there is because the dish soap must get caught up in their wings. They don't live very long. They only live for about a week, but they're really annoying and they generate really fast. So you can start with little fruit flies and end up with a lot really quickly. So that's why you want to get rid of them generally. So there you have it, the simple mixture to get rid of fruit flies. Oh, I was just looking to see which flowers I was gonna plant next. Well, that's all the time we have. Thanks for watching the show. I really hope you enjoyed it just as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. And can you believe the different uses you can reuse those hanging pots for? Definitely something that's gonna keep them out of the landfill. It's gonna put more money in your pocket and uh, make your vegetables happier and healthier in the long run. And that frost blanket, that's going to give you an advantage over your neighbors come this spring. From all of us here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, I'm Holly Baird, reminding you to take a child gardening with you and help grow some memories. This program was funded by the following. At DollarSeed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. 
or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. dollarseed.com. What could be healthier? The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener supports the following. Hunger Task Force believes that every person has the right to adequate food obtained with dignity. They're providing food for people in need. With their 151-acre working farm and fish hatchery in Franklin, Wisconsin, volunteers are needed daily. You could plant seeds in the greenhouse, ride the transplanter, or you can make an instant $10 donation from your mobile device by texting FOOD to 52000. For more information on how you can help in hunger, visit HungerTaskForce.org. The show never ends on our Facebook page. Keyword, Wisconsin Vegetable Gardeners. Like the page and continue the discussion there. You can now follow us on Twitter. See what we're up to and what we're doing at the garden. The address, the W-I Veg Gardener. G-A-R-D-E-N-R. You can email us at the W-I Veg Gardener at gmail.com with your questions, comments, or suggestions about the show.